Today we're going to talk about the successor to one of the best value headphones on the market right now. I only just mentioned in my last video actually how Soundcore Space One, the number one pick for the best headphones under $100 last year, are still so good today that they're competing with headphones twice their price. Well, Soundcore has just released a new pro version of them. They're set to be Soundcore's best but most expensive headphones yet, and I've been testing these out for the past few weeks to see just what they have to offer. Given how good Space One are, surely this Pro model is poised to be one of the best on the market. For full disclosure, Soundcore sent these over to me to review, but they didn't get copy approval for this video. I made the review completely independently so I could share my full honest thoughts both good and bad, and they're seeing this video for the first time just like you. This review will cover all of the key specs and features, how they compare to Soundcore's current lineup, and what exactly Soundcore has done to justify the Pro name. Starting off with the unboxing, I have the cream white version here, but at launch these do also come in black. We have colour matching AUX and USB cables, the usual paperwork, and this interesting carry pouch which has a water resistant outer texture. Now I did expect a hard shell carry case for this Pro model, especially given the price increase, but there's a specific reason Soundcore has gone for a small pouch which I'll come onto. There is an AirPods Max style travel case accessory, or a fully fledged hard shell case you can buy separately for these, but early buyers can get either of these bundled in free instead. Design wise, you can clearly see the DNA of the original Space One here, the thick headband for instance, but the earcups are inspired by the Q45s. I like this evolution. The build and materials feel slightly more premium now, and they look really good. They're Soundcore's most premium cans yet. I especially like the new raised buttons which have better spacing and are much easier to identify and press now. I've got to come in early with my biggest gripe with these headphones though, and it's actually a downgrade from Space One. They've got rid of the wearing detection sensor. I'm honestly completely baffled by this, because this is the Pro model and they got rid of it. I find auto pause and play a very useful feature, and whilst the $99 Space One has it, the Pros don't. So that's super disappointing. Let's move on to the USP though, which is the Soundcore engineered flexi curve structure, and this enables the earcups to now rotate flat in both directions, and slightly more than 180 degrees, but the folding mechanism has been completely re-engineered to allow the headphones to fold down to an extremely compact size. The earcups don't just stack, the headband is now segmented to allow you to really fold these up tightly. It makes them super travel friendly, and I now understand why they provided a small carrying pouch over a larger, bulkier case. I can totally understand those who are disappointed not to get a hard shell case. I am a bit as well. But I think this was a conscious decision from Soundcore to make them more travel friendly, rather than simply a cost saving measure. It initially seemed to me like an odd thing to make such a big deal out of this new folding design. But in fairness, I've not seen anything like this from other headphones, and this could be a real game changer for those who travel a lot, commute, or just want to take their headphones on the go more easily. It's not just portability though, it should help improve durability as well. For those who struggle with headbands cracking and breaking, these could be a great option for you. But I was actually more pleased by what they've done with comfort. It's strange because the weight is a bit higher, the padding seems just as thick as it was before, but comfort is definitely improved. The material feels softer and more plush, and the clamping force is toned down so the earcups gently rest against your head. I think the improved flexibility on the earcups and the new pressure relieving headband helps massively. They're not only Soundcore's most comfortable headphones yet, but genuinely some of the most comfortable headphones on the market full stop. I can happily wear these for hours. The headband adjustment is now smooth as opposed to ratcheting over each notch, and the minimum extension sits slightly larger than the original Space One, which may still be the better choice for those with small heads. Getting into the app now, the Space One features return, so we have adaptive ANC, or you can set a custom level for noise cancelling or transparency mode. There's a wind noise reduction toggle too. The excellent safe volume returns, where you can live monitor the volume level and set a custom cap to never exceed, and thus protect your hearing. This is great and something all headphones should offer. And easy chat returns, but in a more polished form. This detects when you're speaking and immediately lowers your music volume and turns on transparency mode to let you have a conversation. These settings then revert once you've stopped speaking. It works very well, but it is rather sensitive, and can be triggered by just a slight cough. So do consider when you want to toggle this feature on. You can also toggle different prompt tones, adjust the auto power off time, and manage your connected devices. And what's nice about adding a second device with multipoint is that you can do so here without interrupting your music on the first device. Very few headphones offer this, and it's a nice quality of life perk. 
One new feature here is side tone, so you can toggle this on to let you hear your own voice more clearly during a phone call. So not a whole lot of new features per se, but the performance has certainly been improved. Soundcore's new adaptive ANC 3.0 uses a four-stage noise cancelling system for improved real-time adjustments, and honestly, it's their best ANC yet. The general ANC performance is improved across the board. I noticed voices and crowd noise especially were much quieter with these. There's a good boost to cancelling those tricky mid to high frequencies. But I also specifically tested for sudden noises, because that's what headphones with adaptive ANC tend to struggle with, and these were noticeably better compared to the previous model. Although still shy of the likes of Sony and far from Bose, the Space One Pro are now competing in that top tier group for ANC. The transparency performance is pretty good too, not massively different from before, but I did find there was slightly less of a hiss, so it's a tiny bit better. Part of the reason for the improvement is the new 6 mic setup up from 4. This not only improves the ANC, but I found significantly improved the call quality as well. Space One Pro isolates your voice better in loud environments, and I find don't clip or muffle your voice as much either. So after testing in multiple environments, I do think there is a significant improvement to calls with the Space One Pro. Switching over to the original Space One, you might find these are a bit louder, but hopefully you can hear the overall drop in quality. I just find the pros are better at isolating your voice from the background noise. And we've got tough conditions today with both wind noise and loud background noise to contend with, so hopefully this should highlight the difference between the two models. Switching back to the pros, one very important point you need to make is that you should be careful when using side tone in loud environments. I found that turning it on, your call quality just suffers massively. It filters in loads of background noise and your voice quality really suffers with distortion and muffling. Soundcore really needs to fix this with an update because right now it's almost unusable. Overall though, I am very impressed with the call quality with Space One Pro. Okay, so this is now an example with the side tone feature turned on, and hopefully you can hear just how poor the call quality sounds. I previously left it turned off just so I can explain things and make sure you can understand me, but at the moment with the side tone feature enabled, your calls will just sound pretty terrible. For connectivity, we still have Bluetooth 5.3, LDAC and multipoint support, along with Google FastPair. I did notice the multipoint feature is now instant switching. In other words, you can hijack the connection immediately by pressing play on the second device, and the audio source switches over. That's an improvement from Soundcore's previous models. There's no dedicated game mode still, and although the latency is plenty low enough for videos and casual games, I think those into fast-paced games like shooters will want lower latency than what you get here. Battery life is an impressive 60 hours, or 40 with ANC, so that's roughly in line with Soundcore's previous models. It makes sense that the ANC is a bit more battery intensive here, given the noise cancelling improvements. The pros get a very impressive fast charge feature though. A quick 5 minute top up will give you 8 hours of listening. You can of course keep listening wired with an aux cable should the battery ever die on you. Let's talk about sound quality now, and I'd also say this is Soundcore's best yet. The pros use Soundcore's new triple composite drivers, and the most obvious change is in the low end. This feels so much richer, fuller, and the bass is so much more powerful now. For anyone who found this lacking in either Space One or the Q45s, perhaps those who liked the older Q30 and 35s, you'll like these. It doesn't overpower the other frequencies though. The mids and highs still come through clearly, and I'd say the separation and the sense of soundstage is slightly better here too. The clarity is certainly improved over Space One, and I find the treble is a bit more refined as well without losing the crisp edge. It could verge on being a tad harsh with the previous model. Perhaps best of all though, there is a noticeable boost to the overall volume. I'm talking a 20-30% increase. Where Space One and the Q45s could just about be maxed out and still be tolerable, the pros now reach uncomfortable levels far sooner. When listening on LDAC especially, the max volume was a tad low before and is now much better here. The increased bass probably does push these slightly beyond a truly balanced tuning, but of course Soundcore offers a wide range of preset and custom EQ options in the app to tweak the sound. The new Hear ID 2.0 simplifies and speeds up the process for setting a personalised EQ, and it actually gave me pretty good results. You'll also find a toggle for Dolby Audio here, which is supposed to expand the soundstage, but I find just makes the bass overwhelming and you lose the mids and vocal clarity. Speaking of which, when switching from either ANC or transparency mode to normal mode, there is a significant boost to the bass. It muddies the audio, and actually seems like a bug to me it's that obvious, though Soundcore has been known to do this before. Most people will be listening in ANC mode I guess, but this is the one downside I've found with the sound, and I hope an update can address this. 
Otherwise though, the Space One Pro offers a nice improvement over previous models, and these are one of the best sounding options in this price range. I was pleased to find the sound leakage is slightly improved as well. As I said before, the clamping force is lower, so I don't know if it's the new softer cushions creating a tighter seal against your head, but these don't leak as much as Space One or the Q45. So clearly we've had some great overall improvements with this new Pro model, but it all has to be contextualised with the price tag, which is $100 more than Space One at $199. The Pros are clearly Soundcore's best headphones yet, but that price jump is undeniably pretty steep. The issue for Soundcore isn't that the Pros are necessarily overpriced, they're comparable to Sony's Alt Wear and Sennheiser's Accentum Plus, and beat those two in some aspects. But it's the fact that Soundcore offers the original Space One for under $100, those are such good value that it makes the pros harder to justify. I'm especially irritated by the loss of wearing detection. I don't think a pro model should have any downgrades, though I appreciate that there will be some who never use this feature anyway. Still, for those looking for better performance, the pros are clearly a step up in quality pretty much across the board. Comfort, ANC, mic quality and sound all get significant improvements, over both Space One and the Q45s in fact, and the Pro's unique folding design might be a deal maker for some. Fortunately, Soundcore has a track record of offering great discounts, so I'm sure we'll see the Pro's discounted in the near future to increase their appeal further. Comparisons aside, the bottom line is that the Soundcore Space One Pro are a fantastic performer and offer good value for money in their own right. Let's not forget that I specifically made a video for all the best headphones under $200, because the market is saturated with options costing $300 or more, and I can tell you now that the Soundcore Space One Pro would go straight to the number one spot in that video. So let me know in the comments, what do you think of Space One Pro? Do they offer enough to justify the price increase, or were there any features missing that you wanted to see? If you're interested, then I've got links to them down in the video description. If you found this video helpful, then please give it a like. Make sure you're subscribed and have hit the bell icon so you get notified when new videos go live. But thank you very much for watching this one. Let me know what video you want to see next time, and I'll hopefully see you then.